In Unreal, actors have access to a tick event, which lets you run code every single frame. But sometimes you need to run code multiple times in the same frame. An example of this would be something with the character, which usually moves before the physics, and then you need to check after the physics is done to update something during the frame. Normally in the actor, you can only choose one tick group. Each component though can also have its own separate tick group that it runs on. I'm gonna show you a way to make your actor run all of the tick groups. First, we're gonna create an interface which lets us run all those tick events. I have mine called extra tick interface. Each of these are just a function. I don't have any sort of delta on there. You can add it, but I don't normally use it. And once you do that, you're gonna go back and you're gonna create a component called extra tick component. In here, you're just gonna do two things. You're gonna have set tick group. Um, you can drag off this node and promote to variable. Now we'll create this tick group variable with the proper types. And that's just gonna set the tick group that this component's running on. And from there, you're gonna make a switch and send it to each of those functions in the interface to the owner of this component. So let's go back to an example that I made. In here, I have four sets of text. Each of those will have a separate uh, text that it run puts on the screen. Then we're gonna add three tick components to this actor as well, one for each of the different tick groups. For each of those ticks, you're gonna to wanna to set it to a different tick group. Underneath advanced, you can also change the tick group there, but we don't wanna do that in this case because the blueprints don't actually have access to the different tick groups um, that you set here. So you can't run that switch statement uh, that I had in the previous uh, component. So this bottom text is gonna run in the pre-physics group. This one's gonna run during physics. This one's gonna be post-physics and this one's gonna be post-physics work. In here, all I'm doing is each tick group is gonna call uh, this increment tick function, which all it does is increments an integer and sets the text on it. And I just have it for each different text render updating. Then after that, that function is run, we just turn the tick off one for the actor because this actor will be running pre-physics and then all the other ones, it's just gonna set the component off. So that way it doesn't continue to increment this number. So if we do that, you can see that it goes now one, two, three, four in order of the different tick groups uh, and they just shut off after that. So it just increments the number and sets it for each text. So you're asking yourself probably, why would I ever do this? Well, let me show you an example where this actually does matter. So what we have here is a moving platform that once we jump on it, it'll start moving. And then we also have a spectator camera which follows the player's camera every frame. Now I'm gonna jump on this platform and you can see that the movement's a little choppy. Well, what's happening here is the, uh, the player's moving and it's updating on the pre-physics but when you, the platform moves, it's removing during physics. And so uh, this will sometimes cause a slight mismatch and it makes your camera look a little choppy. And so here's the exact same test, but if we jump on the platform, now the camera is actually updating its position in the post physics. So after the platform and the character are done moving. And so you see the camera is much more smooth, although we still have that weird artifact, not sure what that is. So if you wanna do the same thing, you would just make sure to add your interface here. You set it to post physics tick and you update it. So some of you might be thinking, why don't I just have a separate camera manager component that follows uh, the player on its own tick group? You don't need to have all this extra tick stuff. That You can do that, that's fine. Um, this just lets you do everything within the actor and you know, if maybe you have multiple cameras of different types and then your camera manager doesn't have to actually be coded for each type, it's all just kind of encapsulated inside the player. And so that's just a quick and easy way to add multiple tick groups to your one actor. I'm a goddamn superhero, thanks for checking it out.